More fallout now from Iran's unprecedented attack on Israel for the second day in a row. Israeli's prime minister met to discuss its response to Saturday's attack, uh, making no announcement yet. But the country's military chief did say just a short time ago that Israel will indeed respond. World leaders are urging Israel not to retaliate, including the U.S., making it clear that if it attacks Iran, it will do so alone. President Biden still reaffirming his overall support for Israel, though, adding, together with our partners, we defeated that attack. At least half of those strikes failing before even reaching their targets, while almost all of them were intercepted and shot down. We continue to have live team coverage with our Josh Ensinger, who's there in Jerusalem. Also, our senior White House correspondent, Selena Wang, joining us outside the White House. So, Josh, uh, to you now, are we learning anything more about Israel's potential response? And, and if everyone is still active in that war cabinet meeting? Yeah, so they've been meeting all day, uh, all afternoon into the night, Kira. And I will tell you to the point that you just made about the uh, army chief who made that statement, the actual statement that he made, he said, as we weigh our steps with the launch of so many missiles, cruise missiles, UAVs to the territory of the state of Israel, will be met with a response, but it's intentionally vague, and the response really could be anything. You have right-wing members of the Netanyahu coalition saying that he needs to be able to maintain deterrence against Iran. It needs to be a forceful response with kinetic weapons. You have others who say that perhaps he should re revert to a, the shadow war that Israel and Iran have been waging for years, a war of assassinations, uh, covert assassinations, and, and IT hacks, and uh, hacking of nuclear systems. So it's really unclear what they intend to do. Life in Israel today was back to normal. They allowed schools to resume and large gatherings to resume. The beaches were busy on, in Tel Aviv today. Uh, people were in the grocery store. So uh, Israel hasn't telegraphed that it's doing anything anytime soon. Remember, just before the attack from Iran, when the intelligence showed that it was imminent, uh, they did clamp down on all of those things. So uh, it's it's not clear that anything's happening imminently. And, uh, and it's very, very hard to know exactly what's going on in those war cabinet meetings right now, except they say they will somehow respond. Kira? Selena, the president reaffirming his support for Israel today, but still saying uh, the U.S. is not going to help Israel if it chooses to retaliate. Yeah, Kira, the president is trying to walk a fine line here. He's been repeating that he does respect Israel's right to defend itself, and the U.S. clearly played a role in trying to fend off that onslaught of Iranian attacks. However, he made very clear to the prime minister that if Israel retaliates, the U.S. is not going to help. It will do so alone. And up on the podium right there, Admiral Kirby, he was trying to put some distance between the Israeli decision-making process and what the president has been urging. He was saying that it is up to Israel to decide how to respond. But we know that in a phone call, Biden told Netanyahu essentially to take the win, that he's already proved to the world that Israel's military is superior. He wants Netanyahu now to take it slow, to think very carefully and deliberately about his next steps. The president, ever since October 7th, he's been focused on trying to contain this conflict and make sure that it doesn't spiral into a wider war. So even though it appears that Israel is going to respond in some way, the big question is, how does Netanyahu take in the president's advice? All right, Selena and President Biden did speak with congressional leaders as well about this aid to Israel. What more do we know about that and the impact that it could have on this uh, now, I guess, two fronts Israel is fighting? Yeah, Kira, well, what we saw over the weekend from Iran is certainly renewed calls in Congress, renewed efforts from the White House to get that national security supplemental passed. So we know that was the topic of discussion between the president and those big four congressional leaders. But Speaker Johnson, he hasn't made clear what his plan is moving forward. There is growing bipartisan pressure to get that national security supplemental passed. It already passed in the Senate earlier this year. It's been stalled in the House. Speaker Johnson said he wants to find some way to move forward on Israel aid, but it's unclear if that's going to include Ukraine because he's facing pressure from hard right conservatives in the House to not include any additional aid to Ukraine. So big questions here, but the White House for months, they've been urging to get that aid through and up on the podium there, Kirby making clear that passing aid to Israel is critical to maintain those defense systems that over the weekend were so critical to protecting Israel. Selena, Josh, thank you both so much.